Hello, welcome, my dear students. Hello, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is your uh, uh, teacher, uh, Professor Dr. Osama Kashwa. And this is our first lecture in the business law. Our first lecture in the business law. And here we will go today to uh, a new topic, which is the business law. And we will know what is the meaning of the business law. And we'll go about some contona, con contains the main few aspects of the uh, business law. But firstly, we'll see what is the business law about. Business law is about actually the contracts and about uh, the problems in trades, which um, arises from the conflict and the troubles which happen between the traders and the companies and every business which is working in the um, any activity of creation for product or services. So these entities, if things are going well, we know, don't we, we then we don't need courts, we don't need uh, uh, we don't need uh, uh, there will be no in, any kind, kind of confusion or any kinds of problems between all the agencies. But the problem always exists because always there is the 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 right the 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 opinion and the opposite and there is conflict between mankind. That's why there is always something to organize the relationship between the people to defend the rights, to keep the rights. Uh, and this is what we call it uh, uh, a law, the law in general. Before we go to the law in general and law in uh, particulars, let us take some aspects uh, about one of the most important things, which is a contract. So let us know what's the meaning of contract. It's an agreement enforceable by law. Enforceable means it's it's mandatory for the two parties or the three parties of this uh, whatever. How many parties are there in the agreement or in the contract? It's enforceable for all of them. Once you signed on it, then you are committing to do all the obligations which came on the contract. If you are a trader and you have an example to, sub, to um, afford or provide supplies from raw materials on Jan 1 every month, then you are obliged now, obligated now to supply these materials on uh, Jan 1 of every month. If you don't do this, that means you are breaching the contract and there is penalties for breaching the contract. If a builder, if a builder, as example, said that, or a developer, uh, he made a contract to build um, your house. And in this, he's supposed to be done by the next year on January 1. So if he is not done, if, if he is not done on January 1 next year, that means he breached also uh, one part of the main parts of the contract. In that case, he is uh, exposed to penalties or whatever it comes based on the agreement between the parties of the contract. So the contract is an agreement enforceable by law. Uh, Section 2H contracts Acts 1872 that was created in. Uh, so let us see now about the uh, what are the elements of the contract? Lawful consideration, lawful. So it is, it is mandatory for each one to uh, practice it. Second point is free consent. Third point, lawful agreement. Like we said, there is agreement is enforced by the law. So you have to obey what is there. You have to do what is there in the contract and offer and acceptance. No one tie your hands to do the contract. No one tell your heads, you did this very, very, very voluntary. You did this with your own desire. No one forced you to sign. So it's offer and acceptance. Someone offered you the contract. Huh? You see this rise? Then you said, yes, it's okay. Uh, are, are you okay with this? Yes, I'm okay. Are you okay with this? Yes, I'm okay. Exactly like the contract, the work contract. We will give you $24 per hour. Are you okay with that? If you said accepted or yes, that means we are done. Okay, so there is an offer from one party and there is acceptance from the other party as well. Okay, so uh, contractual capacity. 
there is a capacity for it and it's like a contract between the two parties. Okay, then after that we'll go to valid contracts. A, con and co a contract which satisfy the contract, which satisfy all the legal requirements provided under the section 10. So it's a valid contract if I am doing as example, some contracts are not valid. Uh, as example, as if, if we say, uh, let's say for, for trafficking, ch children traffic, or the uh, problems of like um, uh, trading in, uh, in uh, weed without the government permission uh, here, or trading with weed any other place in the world. This is all not valid contracts not a valid contract. If the contract is including parts of doing um, things like slavery, slavery work, this is also not valid uh, contract. If the contract is including points that's impossible to be done by human nature, by humans, this is a non-valid contract. So it's a contract which satisfies all the legal requirements provided for under the section 10. Okay. Uh, what is the void contract then? We'll go to the void contract. The void contract is an agreement which keys is, uh, ceases to be enforceable by law. Which ceases to be enforceable by law. An agreement which is valid in beginning. So it was valid in the beginning itself, but at late stage, it becomes void subsequently due to impossibility of performance. We cannot do the um, articles of the contract. We cannot do it. We can not actually work on it. For that reason, it's impossible for us to do this contract. For that reason, we call it, it is void. Void, like when you say a void chick, means a chick is not accepted. So you can say by other meaning, non-accepted contract. It is like non-accepted contract, okay. So let us see back what we had today till the moment. We had the definition of the contract. Then we had the elements of the contract. Then we had what the meaning of valid contract. Then we had the meaning of the void contract, which we said it was starting in the start of the beginning. It was very nice and very well working, but we saw that it's impossible to execute the, uh, the uh, sectors and the parts and the articles of this uh, contract, we cannot do it. For that reason, it's void. Void means like canceled. Which are void contracts? Let us see which are void. Mistake of facts. As example, if you give, if you are going for a bidding or for a bid, and you give wrong information as example, uh, or you are asked to do things which is impossible. Uh, like you can, you sign that you can build two floors a week or two stories a week, when it is very impossible. This is a void contract, okay? Unlawful object, something is not accepted by law. So this is a void contract also, like trafficking, like slavery, like uh, those all, or which kind of work which lead into very uh, serious risk. Agreement without consideration, and this is very important. Agreement in the restraints of marriage, agreement in the restraints of trade, agreements against legal proceeding. Uh, so those are about the cases of the void contracts. The voidable contract is an agreement which is enforceable at the option of one or more parties. It is enforceable, to, but not at the option of the other party is called voidable contract. So again, voidable contract is that kind of contract which is enforceable for one party, but not enforceable for the others. Okay, the right to rescind has to be exercised within the reasonable time and before the third party acquire the rights under contract. 
Okay. So this is, which are avoidable contracts? Like what? Contracts made under uh, Corsion and you influence fruit regarding to fruit or mispresentation. It's those, those con it is, um, you cannot proceed for the other party in this kind where there is fraud, where there is fraud. So no more exceeding, it's, like it's a void one, it's a void one. It, any void contract is illegal. Any kind of void is illegal contract, and this is true. Any kind of, uh, uh, of uh, contracts which is void means by the power of the law, it is illegal. By the power of the law, it is illegal. Uh, we go now. Illegal contract. An agreement is illegal when it's against the law of land. Any kind of law, when you do, when you do a, a, a contract against this law, then it's illegal. Then it is illegal. Okay. We see also an agreement to commit the fraud or crime. This is also a legal contract to make the fraud or a crime. This is illegal contract. Unenforceable contract. We said that the contract is forcible or mandatory for all the parties to execute all its contents. This is the forcible, but unforceable means you have the right to refuse to uh, do this contract. You have the right to refuse to do this contract. Why? Why this? Why you say, no, I won't execute the contract, though you signed on it, you already signed on it. Why is the reason you will say, no, I will not work on this contract? What is the reason then? A contract which is valid, but due to some technical problem, it becomes invalid. Something happened, as example, as example, uh, you signed the contract that you will build here in this area, a skyscraper, of uh, 120 stories. And later on, before you start, happened an earthquake. And they came to know that this area is a zone of earthquakes. So in that case, it's, it, it was valid before, but becomes invalid when we see that the nature itself and the uh, environment will not help me to uh, produce or to do this work. For that reason, it's impossible to complete it. If as example, I, um, as example, uh, I took a part on the cost to build it as a village, as um, for tourists, like a camp, campus for tourists. And in this area, later on, discover that there are tsunamis are coming or there are tsunamis uh, happen there. So in that case also, you are not, you are not, uh, like you, you have the right to say, no, I won't execute it because how I will execute when the tsunami came and it finished everything which I built. I will not be able to complete or to work on this contract and you have the right to uh, break this contract. Technical problems are absence of evidences, expiry of periods, those are also unforceable, unenforceable contracts. Okay. Offer or a proposal. As example, when a person signifies to another his willingness to do with a view to obtaining the assent of the other to do such act, he said to make a proposal or offer. One who makes an offer is called offerer to whom it is made is called a free. Okay. Essentials for offer. An offer may be general or specific. It should have intention to create legal obligation. It should be definite and certain. 
an invitation to offer is not an offer. An invitation, just invitation, is not offer. Advertisement for the tender for sale of goods by auction. As example, uh, those advertisements are not offered because it's advertised for everyone. It's not for you only. It's for all the people around you. So advertise, such advertisements is not enough to say this is an offer. OK. Acceptance must be provoked by offer. There must be acceptance. If the offerer uh, send the prospective offeree an offer, the offeree has to accept it, has to accept. Otherwise, it will not be uh, legally, it will not proceed. Acceptance must be given before stipulated period of time. Acceptance must be given before stipulated period of time. So, like I offer you to do something or I offer you something and you have to accept it. So you have to accept it within a period of time. Uh, within this period, it's okay. Provisional, uh, provisional acceptance is not acceptance unless final order is not given. So this was, an offer must be communicated terms and condition of offer must be uh, communicated. So each party must know about the offer and must know about the contents of the offer as well. Two identical offers, cross offer, do not make a contract. Two identical offers or cross offers do not make a contract. Acceptance should be communicated, the acceptance should be communicated means I accepted, the other party will know that you accepted this offer. Acceptance should be as per prescribed form. So it's not orally, but it must be written and signed. How many types of offers you can mention? We have general offer, special offer, cross offer, counter offer, standing, offer, those are uh, those are offers. The offers usually is you the, the best example for the offers is uh, like buying a house here in Toronto. What will like uh, organize the system of the, the legal system for uh, buying and selling the houses, there must be an offer, okay? And there must be acceptance for the offer. There must be offer from the seller and acceptance from the buyer. Okay, I make an offer to Ram to buy his house in uh, rupees five lakhs. He makes another offer to sell the house at rupees six legs, what is his offer? It is cross offer equals no, because five and six, it is counter offer. Okay. I make an offer to him to sell my house at rupees five leg. Uh, Ram also makes an offer to buy my house at rupees five leg. I send my offer by post. He sends his offer by email. What offers are these? This is cross offer, means back and forth. I tell them that he may buy my house at any time in future at rupees five lakh. Uh, what types of offer is it? Standing offer, because it's opened. Because it's open standing, we call it a standing offer because it no time limits for it. Okay. Essentials characteristics of an offer. What are the characteristics of an offer? It must be definite. This is the first point. It must be definite. It must expressed or implied. It must be expressed or implied. That's fine. So the contents of the offer must be clear. At least must be clear on what, what is the article which we are doing the offering? A house, a building, a car, whatever. 
and it must be expressed. Okay. Offer is not invitation to offer. It, the offer is saying, uh, I, I'm ready to sell for you this house for 5,000 or $5 million. Okay, and the other one would say there is offer that the offeree would say, I accept to buy it for $5 million. So it is not just an invitation for lunch. Okay, certain, we are certain, we are quite sure of this offer, offer and, the, and the, the, the offerer and the offeree, both of them are working on this and they know what they are working on. And they are very quite sure, everyone is quite sure of his work. Intend to create a legal relationship to create a legal relationship also. This is very important. Intend to create legal relationship. Offer must be communicated. Must be communicated might means every party know about the offer from the other. Every party will know about the offer from the other. Must not contain a tab. The non-compliance of which will amount to agreement. The non-compliance which will amount to agreement. So, uh, it's not including that I offer you, I offer you an offer now to buy, to sell this house, my, sell my house was $5 million. You don't have to accept, you are not forced as long as you got the offer to accept it. It's a matter still of take and give. So you don't have, this is not forcible. This is not forcible. You have to think and to see if you can buy it or you cannot buy it. You have to think in the two cases. Okay. Now I'll go to another slide, which I give an advertisement. I have a computer to sell. If this is an offer, no. This is an advertise. It is an invitation to offer. It is an invitation to offer because um, advertise is considered as invitation for an offer, but it's not offer itself. It's not an offer itself. Uh, let's go back to the private slide. Okay, I make an offer. If you don't reply, I shall assume that you will buy my house in, as example, uh, five legs. Is it an offer? If you if you send now, um, I'm send now. I said, if you didn't reply me, me in silence means that you agreed, but I didn't hear from you. That means, uh, consequently, that you agree. So do we consider this kind as an offer like? Hmm? Let's see. No, because this is the compliance is which we said. You send an offer. You have to, if it will be compliant, the, the compliance term will apply when you say yes, when you agree and you agree with uh, a written agreement, this will ensure the situation. Okay. I make an advertisement that I shall sell my house for uh, rupees or dollars, whatever, five uh, lakhs, uh, to the person who helps me in my legal dispute. Is it an offer? I made an advertisement. Still, we're talking about advertisement. Advertisement that I shall sell my house for uh, 5,000 rupees as example, or $5,000 or $5 million, whatever, to the person who helps me in my legal dispute. It is an offer. Yes, offer can be conventional also. So it can be conventional, means depend on a case as example. If you come within these two months to buy the house, I will give it to you with the price of $1,000, million. If you buy within the next two months, after the next two months, I will give it to you with $800,000. If you come after one year, I will give it to you only with one with uh, $400,000. And that is uh, the, uh, this is the offer, one of the types of the offer. If it is conditional offer, then it is accepted. Perfect. I'm going to advertise that I shall sell my house to the person who helps me. We said, yes, conditional is an offer. We finished this. 
I make an offer. I want to sell my house with five million rupees or five million dollars in case any person is interested. He should send the reply by email. Mohan replies by post. Is it a valid acceptance? No. Because I sent it by email, so you have to send it also by email only. It was conditional offer because it's a part of the conditional offer that you will send the acceptance by the email. How about you send it by the regular mail? No, it won't be a conditional offer because conditional offer, all the contents of the offer itself must be respected and must be uh, executed and must be done by the parties. So if I say by email, because wait, what is the difference? Why? Because the email it will reach within a few seconds with a blink of an eye. But the uh, regular mail might take many days. So in that case, something will happen or whatever, or maybe another buyer will come and pay more. So that means that you harmed one of the parties, which is legally uh, not acceptable. That's why in that case, it is, we cannot say that it is a conditional offer. It is not a conditional offer. It is not. So the second part of this uh, work is what is the meaning of acceptance? What do we mean by the acceptance? The acceptance is when a person conveys his willingness. I mean, I say, okay, I agree. I agree to accept the offer. I agree to accept the offer. Convey his willingness, assent to other person's offer. So I agree on your offer or on what you uh, say to me or what you will sell for me or what you will give me in return of money. So I agree on this. So the monthly acceptance is very important term or condition for the offer to be executed. What are the elements of acceptance? What are the elements of acceptance? Elements of acceptance actually are, uh, must be absolute and unqualified. Absolute acceptance and unqualified, no one interfere in making this acceptance. No press from other, no pressure, no stress from other uh, parties to make you agree on the offer. No, any it's you are you are uh, totally agreeing with your own desire to accept the offer. Must be communicated. Yes, we know what the meaning of communication. It's the transformation of the information between the two parties, the sender and the receiver. The sender will send and the receiver will accept. So it is it goes like this. It must be communicated must be made in prescribed manner also. Uh, it must be shown up visually and felt and so on. Must be within time. Any offer is always conditioned with time. No time, this is another case like we say, uh, uh, but it must be a conditional offer based on time may be done by conduct also. Okay. Let us see this case. Ram sends me an offer requesting to sell goods for 5,000 rupees. I don't send the acceptance. I send the goods. Is it a valid acceptance? Yes, acceptance can be by conduct also. Again, the case, Ram sends me an offer requesting to sell goods of 5,000. I don't send acceptance. I send the goods, yes. So you didn't send the acceptance, but you send the goods already, okay? You didn't say, yes, I agree. Then after that, you send the goods. No, you already send the goods. So this is considered a valid acceptance, yes, because you send it. That means that, um, Inclusively, this means that you agreed on the offer as a seller. So in that case, it is accepted. It is accepted in this case. Okay. 
I sent an offer to Jitendra by post. I sent it only July 1, on July 1, but uh, Jitendra receives it on July 10. When did, when did I make an offer? July 10. I send an offer to Jitendra by post. I send it on July 1. But Jitendra receives it on July 10. When did I make an offer? July 10. In the previous question, when can I withdraw my offer and help? If you want to draw your offer before July 10, because he said, but Jetendra receives it on July 10. So soon as you receive it, soon as you receive it, you have to accept or uh, regret. You say, before July 10th. My withdrawal must reach before my offer by any means. So here, you send an offer to someone, you send an offer to someone and you won't regret. It reached this person on July 10th. Till July, July 9, you okay to cancel your offer back. Till July 9, you are okay, you are fine to cancel your offer back as an offerer, as an offerer. How about the contracts by post? And what we see about the contracts by post? Under English law, prosper is legally proposal, proposal from the proposed, the person who give is legally bound by the acceptance affected through postal medium. So you have to use the postal medium. Is legally bound by the acceptance affected through postal medium. So accepting the offer must be through the postal medium. When the letter is prepared, addressed, stamped, and mailed, even though it is delayed or lost in transit. So again, under English law, Prosper is legally bound by the acceptance affected through postal medium when the letter is prepared, addressed, stamped, and mailed, even though it is delayed or lost in transit. So any kind of contracts, it must be sent by the regular mail or by any way any means of communication. And that time also it's very important to know that any delay does not break the contract. Indian law as example, lays down the communication of an acceptance is complete as against the proposer when it is put in the course of transmission to him. Course of transmission means it's sent to him either by regular mail, by email, but it must, he must respond with the same way. So if I send it to you by mail, I have to get the offer, the acceptance by mail. If I send it by email, it must be with the same, okay. Uh, so as to be out of power of the acceptor. As again, is the acceptor when it comes to the knowledge of the proposer. Okay. Termination of offer now. The first thing is lapse, a passage of time, reasonable time. So this will terminate an offer. If you, because if I say as example, I will sell this house for 30%. If you, if you buy it within two weeks, then the two weeks passed, the two weeks passed, you, then it's okay. This is a termination of offer, a time termination due to time. Termination due to time, because you didn't accept the offer and you didn't work on it and you didn't conduct within these two weeks. So that's why it is terminated, okay. Death of the proposal. So the termination of an offer also is a reason to be stopped because of the death of the proposer. 
the proposer is the one who will send the offer or the offeree, offerer. The offerer died. As example, I want to sell my house. And I offer, I did an advertise or an offer that if you buy it within 10 days, then you will uh, take 20% discount. Then happened that the offer, the offerer was dead before this 10 days. <clears throat> then from whom you will buy as long as the offerer is dead. For that reason, this is a termination for an offer because he died before uh, he conducts the offer. He conduct the process of the offer. He did just send an advertiser, it's like an advertise, but it's not a compliance till the moment. It's not compliance for any parties. Failure to fulfill a condition, as example, uh, to conduct by uh, a regular way of communication. We didn't do this. He didn't do this. The offerer <coughs> did not do this step. So also this is a failure to fulfill a condition. Rejection from offerer may be expressed or implied. Destruction of subject matter happen that the house has fallen or damaged or exploded or whatever. Reject rejection from offerer <coughs> may be expressed or implied. So the, uh, the offerer Rejected back. Revocation, withdrawal at any time before the letter is communicated, not in England, but this is not England. So, revocation means withdrawal. I withdraw the offer in any time before the letter reaches to the offeree, to the offeree, before the let letter is reached or the um, the uh, the offer is reached better the offer <clears throat> is including the information about the offer before it reached to the other party then you can if you cancel it or regret in any moment before it reaches his end you are okay this is a reason for termination of an offer no problem but this is not the case in england okay <clears throat> we'll come to something is called the consideration. <clears throat> the consideration. What is the consideration? It is a desire of promisor. The promise, the promisee, or any other persons has done something or abstain, abstain from doing, or does, or abstains from doing, or promises or promises to do or abstain from doing something such act, abstinence is called consideration for promise. Consideration for promise, okay. Elements of considerations must be at the desire of promisor. May be present, future or past, need not be adequate, must be real, must be for doing something or for not doing something should be valuable. It should be certain and lawful. Except, exceptions for the rule of no consideration, no contract. Agreement made by account, made an account of natural love and affection. Promise to comp comp compensate voluntary services. A completed gift, agency, remission, contribution to charity. Those are all exceptions of the rule of no consideration, no contract. Privity of contract. Only the persons who are parties on a contract, those are the persons who are allowed to claim if there's a problem in their own contracts. So anybody else from the road cannot claim because he, nothing happened to him. 
The problem of that the parties of the contract, they may be harmed or they may be hurted or they may be damaged or they may be uh, having problems and hard time with this contract. So they are the right, one who's having the right to complain. So the parties which is, a, which is uh, involved in the contract only are the one who has the right to complain about the contract. If they want to sow in, in courts or whatever, in that case, they have, they're the one who has to complain. Uh, not claim any rights under the contracts, even through contacts. Contracts may be for his benefit. Such person is known as stranger to the contract. Okay. If I tell a police officer to protect me and in exchange to that, I offer to pay him $5,000. If that is a valid consideration, It is the duty of police officer to protect, so it is invalid. Therefore, such consideration is not valid. So if you go as example to a police officer and tell him, hey, take this $5,000 and protect me. It's already his own uh, duty is to protect you. So in that case, this is not a valid consideration. This is not a valid consideration. I tell Jatendra to give me his house and in return, I promise to show him an elephant with horns. Look at this. I tell Jatendra to give me his house. And in return, I promise to show him an elephant with horns. Is it a valid con consideration? Of course, no. Why? We know that the elephant with horns is not possible. So this is not a valid consideration. So which are the agreement, which are the valid without consideration? Which are the agreements, which are valid without consideration? Based on natural law. So as example, if you love a woman, or if you, a woman, love a man, she don't have to write a contract about this love contents. It's not impossible. This is impossible because this is a, a kind of, um, it's a natural love. So it doesn't need a contract to write it down. <clears throat> Based on past voluntary services. Also, if it's something you did voluntary, no one forced you to do this. Okay, so this is varied without consideration. Time bear debts. Gifts. In other cases, agreement without consideration is void as per section 25. A husband promises to give his car to his wife without consideration. Look at this. A husband promises to give his car to his wife without consideration. If this is an um, agreement, a valid agreement, is it a valid agreement? Yes, based on natural love. It's true. There was an agreement between Ram and Sham. Can Harry go to court to enforce this agreement? We will come back to the parties of a contract, parties of the agreement, and see if someone out of those, the parties can do, can claim or no. In some cases, third party can also go to the court to enforce the agreement. These are the matters where third party is involved. Look at this. But when he is only a part or involved, either directly or indirectly, in the matter as beneficiary as, okay, I have a benefit from this contract, but I'm not a part of this contract. In that case, I can also go and complain. As long as I have benefit and I've been harmed, so I can go and complain. As long as I'm a part of it and I'm harmed and uh, I need as example compensation or based on this contract between those two parties, 
I was going to get benefits, but now no benefits because it's not executed or it's rejected or it's terminated. In that case, I can go to the court and complain because I'm owner of benefits. I have a benefit, okay. <clears throat> when can third party sue for agreement? When can a third party sue for agreement? When you can do this? A beneficiary in the case of trust. A female, as example, beneficiary, I have a benefit, like I said before, and I'm not a direct um, party in this contract. I'm not a direct part, but I have benefits. Uh, I'm harmed now, so I have the right to claim. A female member in the case of HUF agreement for provision of marriage expenses. In case of estoppel by acknowledgement, where benefits come from contract have been assigned to some other person. So the benefits from contract should be coming to me, but now it goes to another person. I have the right to go and complain. Contractual capacity, age of maturity, sound mind, age of maturity, contractual capacity, it means it must be there. Those are conditions must be there. The first thing is age of maturity must be above the age of, in some countries, 18 years old, some others 16 years old. Sound mind, not disqualified by the law to which they are subject. How about the minors? So like India, like other countries, which take with the age of the, uh, to be acceptable, lawfully acceptable, 18 years to sign documents. If a guardian appointed by a court, then the age of majority, 21 years. Effect of minors agreements, no staples, Stoppled against manner, no liability in contract. Doctrine of restitution, beneficial contract, ratifications can be made valid by subsequent ratification, liability of necessaries, person of unsound mind. So if he is not clear mind, something wrong with him, then that case also uh, affect. Liability of necessary, like we said. Thank you so much for listening to this uh, uh, few pages about the contract and about the essentials of the contract and about the agreement, about the difference between the contract and the agreement. We'll go now to solve some questions and we will have here uh, about 10 minutes to finish these questions. What is agreement? What is agreement? This is our first question today. Our second question will be, what is a contract? The third question will be three, what is an offer? So those three questions, it will be examples, give an example for each, give an example of yours, Give an example of yours. And here also the same thing. 
and same things here. Then we'll go for some dots here. So this you will know. You can write it down with your hands better. If your D2L is working, please work on it. If your D2L is working, please work on it. On the D2L. On your D2L. Uh, here is a question number one. Here is a question number two. Here is the question number three, and I will enlarge it now for everybody to see it, to be clear for every one of my dear students. And to be following the screen. So here is our three questions of today. Please work on it now. What is the agreement? Give an example. What's the contract? Give an example. And what is an offer? Give an example. Shall leave for this purpose around 10 minutes, then we will go to another part. Thank you so much. I was uh, had the pleasure to be your teacher within this few, uh, with this one hour. And we will complete on working on other topics uh, by the next uh, lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can now work on these three questions. Thank you so much.